Corvette apparently wanted to be in today's video. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I am Britt, and you haven't subscribed yet, you probably should because I talk about geeky things. And today, we're gonna talk about monster anime. So, monster anime. It's how a lot of people got into anime before they knew it was anime. Things like Pokemon, Digimon, Yu-Gi-Oh, which are all anime we're gonna talk about today, but we're gonna also add just one. When it comes to monster anime, it has become very apparent in my life that my favorite monsters from these monster anime are always incredibly underrated. And that needs to change. That needs to end today. So we're going to talk about my favorite monsters. You're all going to start loving them. And then there's going to start finally being merchandise. Let's start with Pokemon since that was the first one that I got into. So Pokemon, how did I get into Pokemon? I think I've talked about this on my channel before, how I got into Pokemon. But just in case I privated that video at some point because it didn't meet the new cuts that I'm giving my videos these days. I got into Pokemon because I had the most giving grandmother <laughs> on the face of the planet even when you didn't like something. So my first idea, so you have to remember, like I was around when Pokemon first came to the United States. Uh, a lot of people can't say that. A lot of people were too young. I wasn't. I was 12 when Pokemon came to the United States. It came out the same month that I turned 12, which was a little bit later on in the month. And I saw these, so I had no idea what Pokemon was. It was brand new to the United States. There was no show yet to the, in the United States. There was no way that like, I didn't even really know what the internet was. I like, I knew what the internet was. We had it, but like, I wasn't allowed on the internet by myself at the time. And there wasn't a place that we could just go and search and like learn about things on the internet. It's like, I, it's not like now where I can just go to Wikipedia and type in a thing and learn about it and then do more reading because Wikipedia is not always right. But either way, I had no idea what Pokemon was. So all I had to go off of were these two commercials. And one, I may have actually dreamt because I cannot find it to this day. But the, the commercials were really weird. And I know one of them floats around the internet to this day with this bus driver driving a bus, picks up a Pikachu. There's a bunch of other Pokemon on the bus. He goes to a trash compactor, compacts the bus, into a Game Boy, picks it up and goes, ha ha ha, gotcha, as the Pokemon are trying to escape. And then it says, Pokemon, gotta catch them all. And then there was another one involving a vacuum cleaner. And that's the one that I think I may have dreamt up because I cannot find it anywhere. But this vacuum cleaner comes and cleans up all the Pokemon. It's like a cartoon vacuum cleaner. And then it says, Pokemon, gotta catch them all. And I just, I remember that commercial. So my giving wonderful grandmother, we were at Walmart one day, and I noticed it in the, she was looking at video games because she liked to get video games. She liked to watch people play video games. She liked to play video games herself. And so she was looking at the video games to see if there was anything new and exciting. And I said, oh, there's that new Pokemon game. And so she immediately got it because she thought I wanted it. I didn't want it. I thought it looked really dumb. And so I, we went home and I took it and I played it. Um, and I played it for a very long time. I fell in love with Pokemon that day. So there I was playing Pokemon and I caught this Pokemon called a Magikarp. And I battled with this Magikarp. And those of you who play Pokemon know how easy it is to battle with a Magikarp, it's not. I didn't understand that Splash did literally nothing. <laughs> and actually, from what I understand, it actually translates to Hop, which is why Hoppip knows Splash. I tried to battle with this Magikarp, it didn't happen. I ended up getting the experience share and um, kept him in my party just to see what would happen if I leveled him up. And so I leveled him up to level 15 where he learned tackle. So I was able to finally battle with this magic carp. And then at level 15, uh, he became Gyarados. Gyarados was the coolest looking Pokemon I had ever seen in my entire life. I, to this day, love Gyarados. It is still my favorite Pokemon, as you can see up here on the wall. I display Gyarados with love and affection. Actually, Melissa got me that print because of the fact that most of you are gonna say, well, Gyarados is not underrated. Like everybody loves Gyarados. Yes, I get that. Everybody loves Gyarados, but Gyarados has no merchandise. It is very hard to find any kind of art at conventions about Gyarados. And it makes me very angry. We only have the cutesy Pokemon, which don't get me wrong, perfectly fine. I have my favorite starters from each generation. I have my favorite cute Pokemon from each generation. I have my favorite evolution and I can get merchandise and art about those things. And I do have them, they're just not up on my wall yet because I need to get those ones professionally framed. 
because um, those sizes and I want them all together. But at the same time, I want Gyarados and I can't find Gyarados anywhere. So when Melissa went to the convention where she got that, she's like, I'm gonna look for something for Gyarados for you. The one thing I did find were these red Gyarados leggings and I did get, I didn't get them, but I wanted to get them. And that's actually where I talked about this issue with Dylan and Melissa. We were at Yomacon one year and I saw them and I was like, I want those, but I just don't feel comfortable in leggings. But when I do feel comfortable in leggings, I do want to get them. I want to see if I can find them on the internet. I'm sure she sells them on the internet. But then I was like, but I can't, that's like the only thing I've ever been able to find of Gyarados. And I don't even want to wear them right now because I feel too big to be in leggings. Like that's just my own thing. If you are a large woman and you are in leggings, more power to you. It's my thing, my issue, my brain that doesn't let me do it. I don't, I also don't judge other people for what they wear. So wear what you want. Um, and love yourself for who you are. Uh, I love myself for who I am while I don't feel comfortable in leggings. Anyway, moving forward. So it's really hard for me to find Gyarados things. And it makes me very, very sad. I want Gyarados in my life. So Melissa got me that and I love it and it's beautiful and I love it. I said that already. <laughs> Digimon. So Digimon has less of an elaborate story. Matter of fact, Pokemon is probably the most elaborate story I have. Maybe Yu-Gi-Oh has an elaborate story as well, but we'll get there. So Digimon was the second thing that I got into, second monster anime I got into. And that one was pretty simple, other than the fact that I remember talking about it with my cousin. He basically said that uh, Ash got swept into this other world and he needed to like get back or something like that. He thought it was like, an actual spinoff of Pokemon. It wasn't. And then I figured it was just a ripoff of Pokemon when it's actually a ripoff of Tamagotchi. At some point, if you guys want to talk about the history of Digimon, I would love to talk about that and talk about how it really wasn't a ripoff of Pokemon, even though people, in, even I did back in the day, and I still do sometimes because I think it's fun, relate it to Pokemon and call it a Pokemon ripoff. Um, it really wasn't at all a Pokemon ripoff. It just happened to come out about the same time, which of course in Pokemon was the bigger thing. So obviously it was a ripoff of Pokemon because that's just the way it works. So eventually I watched it by myself and I really fell in love with the story. I really did. I love the story of Digimon. I do. And uh, my and I immediately fell in love with the character Gomamon. Um, now I've talked about my love for Gomamon in a previous video. If you've not seen it, I will link it at the end of this video so you can see it. The audio is a little weird in that video, so that sucks, but it's me just being honest about my love for Gomamon. And again, Gomamon is, like, Gomamon's a main character. Like, I get that Gyarados may not be a main character of Pokemon. Like, I get that you're going to find more Togepi stuff, you're going to find more Eevee stuff because they're cuter, you're going to find Pikachu stuff because Pikachu's, like, forever in the show, and you're going to find all that stuff. You're going to find the cutesy Pokemon. Like, that's fine, and I don't understand that Gyarados is not a cutesy Pokemon. He's not, and that's what I like about him. But Gomamon in Digimon is actually a main character. But yet again, you run into Gabumon stuff, you run into Agumon stuff, you run into Padamon stuff, you don't run into Gomamon stuff, ever. And I searched time and time again for something Gomamon. Art, which I have now, plushies, anything like that. I, my first year at Yomacon, I saw this guy, I actually got to know him a little bit because he ended up running Death Note Mafia at Yomacon, he actually created the game. So I got to know him pretty well because I played Death Note Mafia pretty much every time I went to uh, Yomacon. But he was dressed as Joe and he had this life-size Gomon. So after I took his picture, I was like, where'd you get that? I want it. He's like, I made it. And I was like, I want it. So now I'm on this big search for a life-size Gomon plushie. <laughs> Ever since then, that looks like decent and is not ridiculously expensive, which I can find a ton on Etsy. Like I have found on Etsy, but they're either really ridiculously expensive or they look like crap so but until then i have this little guy which i did eventually find at anime detour one year and i love him even though i spent 25 dollars on him i love him and i'm very glad that i found something gomamon once once that is it in all my years of loving po digimon once now the next one he would still probably be underrated just because of the fact that we have so many other monsters and there is at least one QC monster in the show. But this one is mostly underrated because the entire show is underrated and that is Monster Rancher. Monster Rancher has the least elaborate story of how I got into it because it was literally just I saw the 
PlayStation game. I, the, it was Monster Rancher 2 that I got. I thought it looked cool. I decided to get it, so I got it. I played the game. I loved the game. And then I found out there was a show, and I watched the show on Fox Kids. And it's, that's it. There's no, like, dramatic story about it. There is no elaborate, like, lies that my cousin was telling me. It just existed in my life and I loved it. If you're unfamiliar with Monster Rancher, because most most people are, Monster Rancher, so the game that I played was Monster Rancher 2, which I guess is the most common Monster Rancher game. But Monster Rancher 2, essentially, so I'm not gonna speak for any of the other Monster Rancher games. Let me know if you, in the comments below if you've played the other Monster Rancher games and let me know if it's similar to this. You get a monster, you only have one. They come in these little discs and you just revive this monster. And what was fun about the game is you actually took the, the game out of the PlayStation and then you put in one of your own CDs or another PlayStation game. It couldn't be a DVD because it's old. <laughs> it was before DVDs and so it couldn't read the encryption and it, before uh, PlayStation 2 obviously so you couldn't put PlayStation 2 games when that eventually came out. It would basically just say you can't read. So you put these other discs in the uh, machine and then through that they would actually encrypt it and take a monster out of it and it was kind of interesting. Like I still don't know how that witchcraft works witchcraft and it really is because it's not random as I learned it's not random because I searched through my entire PlayStation and CD collection until I found my favorite monster from the show and I used it all the time and got the same monster every time got the same monsters every time I double-checked all of them and got the same monsters every time so literally it is not random like they actually can take the zeros and ones and create a monster out of those zeros and ones. What kind of witchcraft is that? That you can take the game out is, and I don't get it. But my favorite monster from Monster Rancher is Tiger. And I have nothing of Tiger. <laughs> Cause nothing of Monster Rancher exists and it makes me sad. Out of all the storylines between the four shows I'm gonna talk about, Monster Ranger is probably my favorite, Digimon is my second favorite, Yu-Gi-Oh is my third favorite, and Pokemon is my least favorite out of all of the storylines because of how deep they can get. Even as, a, even as a teenager, like a young teenager, I got it and I liked it and I was there for it. But even now looking back as an adult, I mean, even though the dub, it's done in Vancouver. So that was what was also fun was learning later on in life that those people that I was a fan of in Monster Rancher became my favorite human beings like pretty much ever and I got to meet a few I've been able to meet a few of them over the years and even develop friendly relationships with some of these people and some of them follow me on Twitter they might even watch my video so hi if you uh, dubbed Monster Rancher and watching this video so the show Monster Rancher was slightly different so it was about this kid named Geeky who played the game Monster Rancher he became very very uh, good at it. He started going to these co competitions and he won a tournament um, quite literally the first five minutes of the whole show because it's not a tournament anime. But he won this tournament and he was given this special Monster Rancher game and like the only one in existence or something like that. And so he rushes home to play it and he plays it and he ends up getting sucked into their world and then has to save that world from Moo because Moo is turning all of the good monsters into bad monsters. And so he needs to go and save all of them and turn them all back into good monsters. And so, I mean, it's a save the world kind of story, but it's the side stories that really get to you because uh, some of them are super deep. And if I remember correctly, they didn't finish dubbing it because they couldn't because the end of Monster Rancher was just too much to be in the time slot that they was allotted to them. So they just kind of stopped it. I don't know if they ever finished dubbing it and that's what's coming out on DVD or whatever, but if you haven't seen it, please get the DVDs because they're, it's so good. Like I love the story. Uh, the dub can be a little hit or miss because it's such an old dub, but it's so good. But Tiger is so amazing. His backstory is so great. He's played by the amazing Brian Drummond, who if you guys follow my life at all as a fan of anime, you guys will know that Brian Drummond is one of my favorite dubbing voice actors of all time. He's just a ridiculously talented dude. I prefer his Vegeta over Chris Abbott's and I will not ever apologize for that. I just love Brian Drummond. And it seems to be a lot of, uh, it seems like a lot of my favorite characters from Vancouver Dogs tend to either be Brian Drummond or Scott McNeil. I got to meet Sam Vincent back in 2007 and he played Hair and I had him sign a thing for me as Hair and I told him my favorite character was Tiger and he laughed and so he wrote like, he was gonna go get Tiger. And I was like, but I love Tiger. And that was the joke. And it's fun. And according to his brother, he remembers that. <laughs> you ever felt awkward before in your life? Try being remembered for being the one person that talks about Monster Rancher. 
it's it's such a great show if you guys haven't seen it, you probably should but tiger i need something tiger i want like something in the style of this yu yu haka show or the death note or the fullmetal alchemist print here it's all by the same um artist i want something in that style like just something beautiful not cartoony i just want something just absolutely beautiful of tiger and i just need it today yesterday i needed it, i needed it 20 years ago Anyway, moving on. The final one, Yu-Gi-Oh. This one has, again, kind of an elaborate story because this one was a little interesting. So where I grew up, I grew up in a very small area. <laughs> Not even just a small town, like a small area. It's called the Brainerd Lakes area and it's in central Minnesota. And the reason why it's called the Brainerd Lakes area is because the largest town in that area is Brainerd and it is surrounded by a bunch of lakes. So. I grew up in a town called Breezy Point. I went to a school in the city of Pe in the town of Peewaw Lakes. I eventually moved to Baxter. My grandparents lived in Cross Lake. This is all within the Brainerd Lakes area. Uh, matter of fact, Baxter is right next to Brainerd. Like you walk through the Westgate Mall, and I could tell you where Brainerd ends and Baxter begins because it's halfway through the mall. <laughs> not not quite. Like more more of the mall is in Brainerd, and less of the mall is in Baxter. But either way, that's neither here nor there. Um, so when I lived in Breezy Point, I didn't get WB, which was really sad because when Pokemon moved from UPN to WB, I was very, very upset about it. But when I moved to Baxter, I did have WB and I was very excited about it. But because Breezy and Pequot Lakes are pretty much, Breezy Point and Pequot Lakes are pretty much the same town. They are not, but they kind of are. They have the same zip code because Breezy Point doesn't have its own post office. So they're pretty much the same town. But my friend Nikki lived in Pequot Lakes. And so I moved to Baxter, I got WB. She would come over, we'd watch WB, watch Pokemon, whatever. And then she found out, she was like, oh gosh, that show, that Yu-Gi-Oh show is gonna be on WB or is on WB, can we, Can you like tape it for me and then give me the tapes? Cause this was before like DVR was a thing. I, I don't even remember when TiVo first came out. That was the first one. But back then, what you had to do is get these tapes that you could buy at Walmart and Target, stick them into your VCR and then tell your TV that you wanna watch TV from this time to this time on this channel on this day and it would record onto the VHS. So we went to Walmart, we walked over to Walmart and we got like a pack of these eight hour tapes that were all meant for me just to record Yu-Gi-Oh for her so she could watch it. And so I would finish up a tape and give it to her and stuff like that, that was the plan. So that day she was like, can we sit down and actually watch it? And I said, sure, why not, that's fine. And so I was playing The Sims and she was watching it. I could see the TV from the computer, but I was playing The Sims, she was watching Yu-Gi-Oh. And by the end of the episode, I was kind of interested, but not gonna let her know that I was interested because I was too cool for that. So as I was recording it, I was also watching Pokemon at the time. And the way I cleaned back then, because I would clean the whole house, the way I cleaned back then is I'd turn on all the TVs onto the same channel, turn up the volume as much as I could without like it being too loud to be in the room. So no matter what, where I was in the house, I could either, I could at least hear the TV, if not also see it. And so I was watching Pokemon while I was cleaning, and I finished up, turned off all the TVs, except for the one in my bedroom, because I forgot for some reason to turn the one off in my bedroom. So I was upstairs watching TV, because we were in a split entry house. So I was upstairs, um, my room was downstairs, and I was upstairs watching TV in the dining room, because that's where we had our TV, was in the dining room. And I was watching TV, and all of a sudden, I realized that I heard the TV downstairs, so I went downstairs to turn it off, and it was the most pinnacle scene of the first season of Yu-Gi-Oh, where Kaiba threatens to kill himself if he doesn't win the duel. Why does anybody like Kaiba? So that kind of got me interested, and so I watched the rest of the episode, and I fell in love with Yu-Gi-Oh. So that's how I got Yu-Gi-Oh, was watching Kaiba try and threaten to kill himself. So my favorite monster actually, I don't think may have been used in the show. I don't remember off the top of my head anymore, but was not used in the show on a regular basis. And that is Tyrant Dragon. If I have to use an actual monster from the show, then it's Red-Eyes Black Dragon, which isn't super underrated. But the Tyrant Dragon, nobody knows about it. It's about as strong as the Blue-Eyes White Dragon. It is an effect card. I love effect cards. For some reason, I really love effect cards and I don't know why. Just call me Bakura. That's what his deck is mostly made of. But I love the effect. I love that it can pretty much, if you do it right, can beat the Blue Eyes White Dragon and is just a really kick-ass looking card. So there you guys have it. All of my favorite monsters are super underrated and I hate it. So please love them for me so that they can start getting merchandise and I will see you guys all next week. Bye. <laughs>